Hey guys, today on the podcast, I have Joe Lovett. Uh, she is the podcast host of The Confident Swinger. I will make sure and have a link to her podcast at the bottom of these notes. She's a coach leading others into the lifestyle. She is also eternally optimistic. She's a wife. She's a mama. She loves leading others into this world of swinging. So today's podcast is all about swinging 101. What is swinging? We're going to dive into why would you want to be a swinger? How could you end up being a swinger? And what does that look like if you wanted to jump in? Uh, maybe the pros and cons, maybe a story or two. We shall see. So Joe, I'm going to toss the baton over to you. Please tell all of our listeners a little bit more about you. All right. Well, um, yeah, I'm Joe. My husband and I have been in the lifestyle for gosh, 16 years. Um, we dated for about a year and I was, I'll tell you my story. Um, I had always been like bi curious, but I'd never really been in a relationship with anybody that I even felt comfortable sharing that part of mm -hmm. myself with, let alone like exploring it. So when I got with Chad, it was just, it, it was a whole different thing, you know, so I was comfortable with him. And so I was able to explore that side of me. And he said, well, let's try it. Let's, let's do some things. I found this website called C4P and it's yes. for, for people that, you know, want to, to open up their relationships a little bit. So we got started and Oh my gosh. Yeah. The rest is history. So <laughs> that is perfect. And let me jump in. I have referenced C for P several times. So when you guys look at podcasts and I don't remember the episode numbers, but, um, open relationships, one Oh two, one Oh one and part two, I do link to C for P in the notes. Um, think of it as like match.com meets 1980 website, but it's really in depth. So you can say, uh, to Joe's point, you know, I'm a, I'm a bi-curious woman open to soft swap, hard swap. I'm a straight male only interested in, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, you can get really clear on your intention and what you're looking for. So I'll link it again into these show notes. If you guys want to check it out, especially if you're listening and you're within our region, um, Joe comes to us from Springfield, Missouri, and I am in Northwest Arkansas. So if you're anywhere in these surrounding areas, and it's probably a little wider, cause I, I noticed they do have other States and other events in other States. Um, go check that out. If this might be for you. Okay. Keep going. Okay. So, um, how did you end up hosting a podcast on this? Like I can imagine like 17 years ago, you meet Chad 16, you know, you're married at this, you know, the, the next year mark and you're like, Hey babe, I'm kind of like bi curious. Although 16 years ago, that wasn't a word. Right. So you were like, I think right. I might like women, but I'm really not sure. And I kind of want to play. And he's like, cool. I found this website. See for P let's hop in there, babe. <laughs> 16 years later, how did you <laughs> go from like, were you guys really quiet and secretive 16 years ago? Have you, I don't think you're a secretive person. I, I don't know if that's in your DNA. <laughs> I'm really not. I will say that it's definitely a balance finding, um, my husband is, and, and I don't want to say secretive. He's, he's a much more private person than I am. I, I am clearly just open for the world and I'm an open book and you can ask me anything, anytime. I don't yeah. care, you know? Um, but he's much more private. And so finding that balance was, was a challenge and it is a challenge, but really it's just, it's been this amazing, um, exploration for me of finding, trying to come into my own and figure out what I wanted to do with my life, what I wanted to do when I grew up and how I wanted to give back to the world. And um, I'm a swinger and I love swinging and swingers are my people. Like it's a whole like-minded community tribe that's just amazing. And so that's the people that I wanted to help. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what brought me in to coaching really. Um, because as amazing as swinging is, it, it does have its own challenges and pitfalls, and it's still really not um, socially acceptable for the vast majority of our society. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of space for people 
to go for resources there if they're struggling with things or if they need help um, to be able to have that um, that resource that's open and honest and non-judgmental and help them achieve their goals and, and solve their problems and that kind of thing. So that's really what led me to being a coach. And that's what led me to the Confidence Swinger podcast because everybody's fucking amazing. And it just breaks my heart that they don't see themselves for the amazing fucking flowers that they really are. Yeah. So I really just want to build people up and you see a lot of that in everyday life, but really I see it in the swinger world because that's kind of my world. So uh, I have loved diving into your podcast because I feel like you show up so authentically you and you bring up things that nobody really wants to talk about. Mm -hmm. I mean, they want to hear about it, but they mm -hmm. don't want to say the words. So like the one that was really impactful for me was the one where you were talking about, you know, kind of come as you are into the swinging community and into events and, you know, everyone's at a different weight. Everyone has a different body type every, and there is someone for your everything one, like there's someone for everyone. Um, some guys like really skinny women, some guys like super curvy women, some guys like really fluffy women, some guys like blonde, like whatever. Right. And I know with my experience of like kind of tasting everything in the cafeteria that I never had more self-confidence until I boldly stepped into the world of having sex with other people mm -hmm. outside of my marriage with consent. Um, and Lord, like to watch a man take you in all of you and be like, you're the most delicious thing I've mm, ever seen. Mm. Like God, your self-confidence. And you're like, Oh, but I have cellulite and I've had two babies and two C-sections and like, you know, there's extra pounds. And they're just like, I don't even see it. I don't know what you're talking about. You're perfect. Exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. I love that too. Yes. Mm. So yeah. part, that's part of the amazing thing about the lifestyle is just the acceptance that you get because, you know, we are as a whole, a non-monogamous society. And I don't know if you've read the book, um, unfuck your intimacy. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh I'm my writing God. Writing this down right now. It is a great book, but, um, and if you are an audio book person, um, listen to it because it's great. Anyway, sorry, distracted. Um, she talks, <laughs> she talks about We're like, here's another resource. Here's another resource. <laughs> <laughs> this like, is the teacher in both of us. Like, is. let me just help you. <laughs> uh, but she talks about how 50% of people are hardwired to be non-monogamous. And 50% are, hard, are hardwired to be monogamous. So it doesn't make you wrong mm. to be interested in that. And also you're either hardwired that way or you're not. So you being introduced to swinging is not gonna make you want to be a swinger if you're not already a swinger. It's like being introduced to a gay person is not gonna make you gay if you're not gay. <laughs> That's hilarious. I've never <laughs> heard anyone say that, but it makes tons of sense. So, well, what happened? This is a conundrum. I've never heard anyone say that 50. I, now I did do an interview with Jessica um, Estefandier. I think that's how you say her last name, where we titled it 50% of the world is actually non-monogamous. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> I've heard this concept, but I think that just hit home and that we're probably partnered or married to someone that is not non-monogamous. Right. So that feels sticky. Mm -hmm. Is that maybe where your coaching comes in? Like, what do you do with that? It is. And it's a challenge and you have to decide within yourself what's right for you. You have to decide if your relationship is more important than you exploring that side of yourself. And nobody can make that decision for you. You have to decide what's right for you. But where a coach can come in is helping you navigate those conversations and helping you pull out what is important to you because sometimes it's really fucking hard to figure out what's inside yourself. 
Yes. And, and then process those feelings and emotions yes. as they're happening in real time. And you have the difficult conversation and then you're like, Oh fuck. Now what, who can I talk to? Well, I can't call my mom and I can't call yeah. my best friend. Cause they don't know mm-hmm. about any of this. Right. Yeah. 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 So Definitely for the helps. podcast, it's, it's ironic that you said that for the p- podcast, I'm doing a, um, series on communication. And so this first one, was kind of like an overview that just dropped this week was kind of like an overview of communication next week's is like how to have a conversation about your wants and needs and desires with your partner and the following week is like how to talk to your partner if you're not on the same page Ooh, this is going to be such a good series yeah the communication series Mm -hmm. so it's super exciting so cool can we step back just one sec? I'm going to pull you back for a second because we missed a very important piece, which is defining swinging in the world of openness. Like within my podcast, if you're curious about being open, we have talked about open relationships in general. We've talked a lot about polyamory because that's how I identify myself and my closest friends all identify themselves. There's this whole pocket of swinging that I have never touched on. And I think it's really important that we kind of define what is swinging. I mean, we've all seen movies where there's swingers and, you know, sometimes that's not actual reality. And sometimes it's, it's intermeshed with polyamory or intermeshed with maybe even cheating. I don't know. Can you help us define this please? Oh, absolutely. So swinging is really when you want to open your relationship to other sexual partners. So swinging is really just based around that sexual aspect. Um, it's not looking for other relationships. It's not looking for that romantic emotional attachment with somebody else it's Mm -hmm. really just about the sex and a lot of the times um those that sex aspect comes with like different connections emotional connections but not relationship romantic connections so um that's kind of where the difference between polyamory because that aspect is really seeking that emotional romantic connection with another person or another couple. Whereas swinging is really focused on the sexual aspect. So, Mm. yeah. Okay. So how does a person know, am I a swinger or am I polyamorous? And I think I noticed on your website, you had some sort of a quiz on this maybe, or like, what type of swinger are you? (laughs) Tell us how we can self-identify, or at least to me, that's like the first step. And I think a lot of times too, that the swinging lifestyle is kind of the first step into the open portfolio Mm -hmm. because it's kind of the easiest and the low hanging Mm -hmm. fruit and it can just be sexual. And I think sometimes too, then the partner that's being sort of okay with you testing the waters doesn't feel like you're going to go fall in love and leave your marriage because it's just sex. Right. And so that's, you know, a lot of people do get into it like that. And I guess we can talk about the reasons also why people get into swinging, you know, so um, like, like my story is wanting to explore that like bisexual aspect. And there's a lot of people that get into it because of that male and female, the female side is tends to be more sexually or more socially acceptable or more open or more rampant, I guess, I don't know a better word, but, um, it, it is wonderful for me to see a lot more openness about by guys in the last few years. And I think that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's that aspect of, um, wanting to explore bisexuality or other sexual, um, have other sexual experiences that you can't have in your own relationship. So that's definitely one of the reasons that people get in. Also, um, you know, if you have a great solid relationship, you kind of lose the excitement a little bit. That kind of is a natural, that just kind of naturally happens in a relationship is Mm -hmm. you lose a little bit of that excitement. And so swinging can really bring that excitement, that sexual energy back to your relationship. Mm. And that's why a lot of people want to get into it is it brings that sexual energy 
back to your relationship. So you get to explore having sex with other people or playing with other people. Mm -hmm. And that's such a huge turn on. And then you have all of this sexual energy that you bring back to your own relationship. And so it just reignites this amazing spark in your own relationship. Mm. And what I didn't hear out of all of that was like, unmet needs or Mm. like, I want to try a new thing and my partner really isn't into it. Mm -hmm. Could those also be reasons or is it really just like bring the spark back to, Oh no, absolutely. Um, there are things that your partner is that you're going to be interested in that your partner is not. And that's normal too. Everybody's different. Mm. Fuck relationships are hard enough to navigate on your own without trying to figure out how you can get your needs met in a way that your partner is just not willing to do or able to do. Yeah. So yeah. if you can come together ethically, of course, and agree that these are things that you can go do and you're going to get turned on and you're going to bring that excitement that you have back to the relationship, it's still going to enhance our relationship. Even if I'm not necessarily a part of that other sexual side, you're getting your needs, your needs met in a way that I'm great with. And also I benefit from it too, because you're happy and that makes me happy. Mm, That's so good. Uh, let's, I want to latch on to something that you just said, which was, you know, about the hard. And I think I'd love to hear your perspective on this too, but I think, being in a closed monogamous relationship for 20, 30, 40, 50 years is hard, right? Mm -hmm. Because typically what I've seen and experienced is you kind of fall into just being married and like sex might dry up, you know, it kind of doesn't happen anymore. It's not important. Now we have kids and we have all these other things, right? Or to your point, just a minute ago, you have a partner who is not aligned with you sexually, either in, you know, desire of how often or desire of, um, exploration maybe. Um, and so what I have found is I've really paid attention to, um, the couples around me is, you know, especially older couples who I'm noticing are like sleeping in different bedrooms or haven't had sex for a decade plus is, Like, I don't know about you, but I don't want that. Right. (laughs) Right. right. And so I feel like, okay, so that in itself is its own hard. Like it's fucking hard to live like that. Mm -hmm. And maybe people just get used to it and feeling like, okay, my relationship is really all not, not all that fulfilling. Um, then there's like the hard of, being open and having to have the difficult conversations and Mm -hmm. set boundaries and expectations and what the container looks like. And then navigating, you know, sleeping with other people or in a polyamorous relationship, falling in love with someone else and having Mm -hmm. multiple relationships. Can you, because I've spoken to this a few times on the podcast myself, but I want to hear your, your thoughts on, which heart is harder or which heart is not as hard or like, why would we be willing to accept hardness period? And why not just, um, why not just end up in a relationship where we're sleeping in separate beds, you know? So relationships are always going to be hard. There's two different people with different thoughts and emotions and feelings and needs that are trying to come together to live their life together. And it's hard. I think people, like you said, you kind of fall into habits and in all honesty, not everybody is willing or excited about having difficult conversations or exploring things that are hard. Mm -hmm. So you kind of just settle because you accept the pain of where you are, you accept Mm. the known pain of where you are because you don't want to explore the unknown pain of what you could have. Yeah. So, um, and I, nobody can make that decision for you. You have to make that decision. That's right for you. It makes me so sad when I see people that are living just this small version of their life because they're not willing to face the pain that comes with growing. Mm. 
So. I, I agree. And I think, and I try to honor the fact that every body and every human is different, <laughs> that we all have different kind of like archetypes or blueprints mm-hmm. of what's important to us. And I came into this lifetime super sexual and mm-hmm. all like all the previous lifetimes that I've been able to tap into through regression are super sexual. I mean, I'm a prostitute, I'm a sex worker, I'm a whatever. Um, I've, I've been in, you know, in, in the temple as a tantra healer through sexuality. And so I think, I think that's funny because a lot of us are showing up in these groups, right? Because we're like, oh, we love this. This is fun. This is healing. Of course it is. But then I try to remember that there's a subset of the population where like sex is just not important to them. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to wrap my mind around that. Mm -hmm. And as I go into this sex coaching and relationship coaching program, I want to hear from all these people. I want to understand how you could take sex completely out of your life and out of the equation, yet maybe still be creative. Like for me, it's my life force. It's how I create. It's how I manifest. It's how I am abundant. It's how I am juicy and magnetic. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine a world where it's not in my life. Mm -hmm. I've gone through menopause. I don't know if changing hormone levels will do that for me, but I have no idea why I'm saying all of this other than just to say, I'm putting it out there that I guess maybe that's where I'm coming from. And that's probably where you're coming from. And that's why we're at the forefront of these spaces of trying to help people find, find a different path that is truly aligned with them Mm -hmm. so that they're not living their life in misery, which I think brings us to the question of how would I be a swinger? Like, what are the steps that I would take? this feels aligned for me. Mm -hmm. Now what? Like now, how do I make this happen in my life? Right. What's the first step? um, The first step and every subsequent step from here on out until the end of eternity is going to be communication with your partner. So it starts with having a conversation and it's really just, Hey, I know that it's, a lot of people struggle with having that conversation because it's super vulnerable and and disruptive <laughs> and can make the other person mad. I yes. mean, there's so much emotion in so the first many, conversation. So many things. So yeah. even before I should, I should step back a little bit and say, swinging is not going to fix an unstable, unhappy, unhealthy relationship. It is not a fix. It is meant to enhance a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. So if you are in that space where you're having troubles already, you're already struggling with your communication or you're already, um, not on the same page with each other, swinging is probably not going to be a good fit for you right now. And it's probably going to end your relationship in the long run, honestly, because, um, and, and that may be, that may be good. That may be right. Not everybody that's together is meant to be together. And sometimes you need a catalyst to explore that and find out that you guys aren't meant to be together, mm-hmm. but it starts with a conversation and it starts with, um, you know, you can have that with, Hey, I heard this podcast or I saw this thing on TV or I had this dream those are all really good conversation starters um, because you can kind of get a feeling for what your partner thinks about it before you are just totally open and vulnerable and being like, this is what I want to do. You're like, theoretically. So, right. <laughs> yes. So you could totally start the conversation with, hey, I heard this podcast about swinging. What do you think about that? Because then you can get an idea about where your partner is at. And be open with them and be respectful of where they are. And it's all about compromise. It's all about going and doing something that everybody is comfortable with and communicating along the way and finding those boundaries and always exploring those boundaries before and after you've had any kind of experience. It's all about, okay, checking in with each other and seeing how did you feel about this? What do we need to adjust for next time? What did we learn? 
because <laughs> you're always going to be learning. You're always going to be growing together. So it definitely starts with that conversation. And I always say it can enhance your communication with your partner. It is oh, next level. Being in an is. open relationship is next level communication. Mm -hmm. And in a good way, it brings mm -hmm. you more together. You end up having more things to talk about and share. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the, you know, we had kind of talked before about the benefits of the lifestyle mm -hmm. and um, it definitely like that sexual enhancement aspect of um, that swinging brings to your relationship, but also the intimacy that it brings to your relationship is just on a whole other level and not just the sexual component of that, but that trust and that respect and that connection that swinging brings to your relationship when you're doing it in a healthy, in a healthy, safe way is mm -hmm. just unlike anything non-monogamous people can be able to understand. I think that's a great point. Cause I think when you're in a monogamous relationship, it's almost like it's a given, like it's a perceived given that your person will always be with you forever and no one will ever stray and no one will ever think about anybody of the opposite sex. And it's like locked and loaded for the rest of your life till kingdom right. come. Right? Right. right. And then you realize down the road that like, you don't own your partner and they are like, you know, unique human beings, sovereign beings, <laughs> and that you can't make them stay with you. <laughs> right. And yes. And you shouldn't try to make anybody stay with you. They should stay with you because they want to stay with you, not mm -hmm. because they feel like they have to. And Can I ask so you a question about this? Yes. Okay. So let's say you're interested and your partner is super hesitant. Mm -hmm. What I have heard. And a lot of times I think from, in my experience, it's the women that are like the interested ones. Now I'm sure there's a lot where there's the opposite, but just in my own world, it's mm -hmm. the women that are interested in opening and the men that are a little bit more old school. And they're like, well, but we're locked and loaded. You signed a contract. Like you're mine. I'm not fucking letting anybody else touch you. <laughs> <clears throat> and then they have the conversation that you just mentioned, the initial mm -hmm. opening conversation. And then after, you know, a week or so and things settle and you can integrate, then, you know, the man is a little bit more like, okay, tell me more. How can mm -hmm. this look? What would you say to a hesitant male or this mm -hmm. could be female of like, how can this actually help your marriage slash partnership slash relationship. Yeah. How could this enhance it? How could it actually help you get closer, help you stay together longer? How could it be, you know, almost like a us against the world kind of vibe, like talk about what that is, because I'm finding at least again, in my world, the men being very stuck in how this is just going to make ruin us. It's just going to ruin us. Right. I don't understand how this can help. Right. And it's really having that conversation with your partner and saying, these are the things that I see. These are the reasons that I see that it could help is because it can bring that sexuality back to us and because it's going to enhance that trust, but also being, finding out from your partner what they would like about it, what could benefit them. So asking your partner, if you're in that situation and your partner is super hesitant, say, well, tell me about positive things that you could see coming from it, because then that's going to get your partner thinking about how it could benefit them. Mm -hmm. And really it should be about both people. So if you're interested as, as the, the female in this, in your instance that you brought, if she's the one that's initiating it, you know, she's telling him all of the reasons why she wants to do it, but she really needs to find out from him what he would want from it or what, how he could benefit from it as well. And that could get him thinking about, okay, well, maybe I could explore my sexuality too, or maybe it would be hot to watch you with another girl if, if she's bi or you know, it might 
it might open up some feelings. But again, you may be two people that if he is very, very hesitant, he may be hardwired to non-monogamy or I'm sorry, he may be hardwired to monogamy Mm -hmm. and she may be not. And so there's the challenge in that. Okay. So we've talked about having the initial conversation, some points that you should bring up with your partner who might be a little bit hesitant to make them start to kind of feel into the idea. Mm -hmm. Let's say that, okay, they're both on the same page of let's try this. Mm -hmm. What is the next step of what does trying look like? What could trying what's dipping a toe in? Mm -hmm. So definitely starting slow and going at the pace of the person that's least comfortable. Mm -hmm. So you need to go at their comfort level. So that could mean, um, role-playing really is a great way to do that. Um, Mm -hmm. and watching maybe some porn and talking about it in your sex and being like, Oh, well, what if there's another person here? And I reached out and touched him while I'm touching you Mm -hmm. and kind of bringing that role play in, in a totally safe space. Mm -hmm. Um, the next step you could also be is just to um like go to an event just to see and go with the expectation that nothing is going to happen we're not going to um play with anybody else we're not going to make contact with anybody else we just want to get a feeling for it and see if it's something that we want to explore um you could also create a profile um, on one of the sites like C4P that we talked about Mm -hmm. and try to make some connections with people, um, that it kind of depends on what your comfort levels is. Some people are not going to be comfortable going to an event. They just, they have social anxiety. And so that aspect of it is going to be difficult for them. So for some people, they're going to be more comfortable kind of meeting one-on-one and, um, exploring that aspect on a smaller individual basis with people. Mm -hmm. But um, if you create a profile, you can connect with people that way. So yeah, and definitely, yeah, yeah, start small and make sure that you have hard boundaries set. And both people need to be, you need to have a safe word that says, this is our word that if at any time I'm uncomfortable, I can say this word and we're going to stop period. No questions asked. Nobody gets pissed. We're all adults here. And I want to make sure that I'm creating that safe environment, that safe container for my partner. And I want both people to know that if at any time I feel uncomfortable, we can stop period. No questions asked. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That is so incredibly helpful. Okay, guys, I wanted this to be a very high level one-on-one and I think we've done this. Do you feel like we've complete? I think we've completed the one-on-one basics. We've talked about what is swinging. We've talked about why you might be into swinging the differences of swinging versus polyamory. We've talked about how to have the initial conversation. And if someone is a bit resistant, how to make sure that they're also in win. And then we've brought you up to the three different ways that you can start to kind of integrate this in and dip your little pinky toe (laughs) or your whatever toe into the water through role play or watch some adult videos together and kind of bring the idea and the concept into the bedroom, go check out an event as a voyeur. I love that idea. Um, And then we've also talked about creating a profile on something like a C4P. You could do it on Tinder. I know people do couples things on Tinder. Um, I'm sure there's other places as well. So I feel complete in our wrap up of part one. I want to make sure that you guys connect with Jo. Her website is absolutely incredible. It has so much resources. She has a blog. She has a link to the podcast. She has a link to her coaching. You can do programs, hourly stuff. You can just, you can pay her to just like 
ask questions and get help, which is amazing. I think it's so hard to find resources these days. And so when one kind of falls into your lap, I think a lot of times it's because it's in alignment and it's what you're looking for. So please go check out Joe, connect with her on all of the social platforms. We'll put links to all of them in the show notes too. So you can easily click on Instagram and her website and all the things. And then let us know if you want more right? By listening. So I'll be checking stats. And if this one falls within our top, listen to, we'll bring Joe back and we'll have a part two. Feel free as well on any of our social platforms to, you can DM her or me. You can write a comment on either of our, um, you know, social profiles, like, Hey, I really am curious about this particular thing within this genre. Can you guys do another podcast? Can you come back and do something a little bit deeper? And I know, um, and I'll let Joe speak too, but I, I know that's what we're here for. We're here to empower and teach and educate and coach and shed light on there's another way to live. We want you to be in your truest alignment. We want you to be happy and fulfilled in your life. And so that's why we both dedicate so much energy and resources to pushing all of this information out and then bringing people onto our podcast that can shed more light on things like this. Right, Joe? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I love that. You said that so well. (laughs) (laughs) It's because we're very, very similar. (laughs) Yes. Yes. I, I know. I'm like, I feel like I found my new best friend. So I know, me too. I'm awesome. like, when am I going to go to Springfield and come meet you? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Is there uh, anything that you want to leave the listeners with? Oh my gosh. Um, I do have a couple freebies on my website. You I, One is um, a three-day free confidence course. Um, and one is like a body language 101. So feel free to go. It's under the heading freebies. So feel free to go and uh, download those, um, just keep growing and keep embracing your best self. And and if that's, if that means exploring this wonderful sexual side, then do it. Yes. Don't be afraid. Do it. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I mean, this lifetime is meant for us to be explorers, to get to like taste all the different pieces of what it is to be human. And so, yeah, why not just dive in? Okay. Thank you, Joe, so much for joining us today. And I cannot wait to do this again. All right. Me too. Thanks.